problem. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back here on our WTC Zoomina one more time. And I'm sure today is going to be a fantastic lecture. I had a word in mind for an, an Italian expression, but I cannot translate in English. It doesn't make sense. So I'm sure you guys will love our lecturer today. And I believe he's got a surprise, but I will not tell you about the surprise. He will let you know the surprise. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you will enjoy Mirko Gozzoli. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the Fred, Mirko, and thank you, Nicole. Thank you all, uh, WDC Federation and the board that uh, you uh, asked me to do this uh, online lesson, online lecture. And uh, of course, uh, I think it's a fantastic project to continue to keep in touch to the people that uh, is uh, in this dance industry. So uh, I going directly to the subject of uh, this lecture and uh, I'm very glad to receive this subject because uh, uh, I'm one of the uh, youngest teacher on this uh, industry. Uh, I was competing not so uh, long time ago so uh, I think it's uh, very important to bring uh, into the ballroom dancing a little bit like uh, fresh hair of uh, innovation. And the subject of today's lecture is uh, uh, looking into the future of ballroom dancing. So, uh, of course, uh, we should a uh, uh, little bit uh, thinking if we would like to go into look into the future we have to think about uh, also is very important the past and the present because uh, the past uh, give us and teach us from where we come from uh, so how is the ballroom dancing is developed how is the this industry has become very big and of course present present in order to uh, do it better to don't uh, uh, make any mistake in order to continue to develop and continue to improve into the future. Immediately, as a ballroom teacher, as a ballroom, I still feel dancer. I've been uh, often to competition, to the very important event like uh, Blackpool, International, UK, and many other important events, Dutch Open. Uh, any, anyway, I, I don't want to mention all these events because there are many good events during the year, unfortunately. In this situation, we can't. But of course, uh, as I uh, tell before, with a little bit small conversation, is uh, not the point to speak about negativity because uh, we make the negativity more strong and more popular. So I don't want today to uh, speak and blame coronavirus uh, or something like this, even that I already mentioned, but I didn't want. Anyway. Uh, so I, I was thinking that uh, it's uh, important to, uh, for sure, know very well from where we come from. So is uh, how uh, the past uh, uh, generation bring in the situation that we are now. And I think is uh, uh, the past generation did a very good job. Now is the present generation, the, the generation that is now has to continue this good job in order to be successful even to the future. And uh, uh, as I tell you before, I've been in many competitions and as a ballroom teacher, my first question by watching the uh, entry into the program that I see in many competitions, I can see that the Latin American has uh, like 100, 150 couple enter more than in the ballroom. And this is, it start to make me scared and make me thinking very deep about it. So, which means that uh, uh, as uh, many people by the joke will say that the ballroom dancing is uh, just for the old people and just uh, boring. And uh, of course, uh, of, I don't want to, to, to speak badly also about the, the, about the old people. It's not nothing against. Of course, even senior is a, a good uh, business on it, but I would like to continue to uh, develop and make it the ballroom dancing interesting for the young generation because I would like that uh, uh, the young generation couple, uh, I will speak about juvenile youth, uh, uh, and then so on, continue their career to amateur. 
continue to uh, be in love also to the ballroom dancing, not just in Latin, because they enjoy, they enjoy the body expression, they enjoy the feeling, they enjoy the atmosphere, maybe they enjoy the music, for sure. But I was uh, young as well, and I was also a uh, dancer, which is, I've been in the competition, and of course, once you hear the music of samba or cha-cha or jive, are very happy music that immediately, even that you don't want to dance, immediately your body starts to do something. Uh, ballroom dancing is uh, very elegant, very classical for sure, because for our costume, because for the uh, origin of the ballroom dancing. But I would like that uh, we're creating something like once uh, I was in a youth generation that I was watching the competition and the very uh, good couple that they was not looking boring during their performance, was looking interesting because they bring into the floor their personality, their charisma, their character, not just uh, the correct technique and the correct quality, which is very, very important. And of course, uh, rules are very important because uh, rules give you freedom. So without rules, you cannot have freedom. In dancing, if you don't have a good basic, a good principle, a good fundamental, you cannot uh, uh, make a, a very high level performance in terms of artistic performance. So this is very important. Of course, you can try to make uh, an artistic performance without uh, principle and fundamental, but then in the end, you will look without quality and it look like uh, a clown inside of the floor. And uh, sometimes we can see a couple that they try to be more free and try to risk more, but without uh, principle and fundamental, is uh, the, the, there is no balance between points. So, therefore, it's very important to learn from the past, bring into the present, and then try to develop into the future. And of course, this is uh, what I uh, see during when I was uh, uh, youth uh, as a competitor, that the couple that was dancing in professional in my time, they make it this, uh, uh, this uh, discipline very, very interesting. And of course, uh, uh, motivated the young generation in order to, to have uh, like some uh, idol, to have uh, some, uh, some one that want to copy. Now I can see that, uh, especially the young generation, they don't have anyone that they like to copy about uh, uh, what is in the dancing today. Probably because, uh, as I tell you, it's very important, uh, first of all, to, I tell you from my experience, of course, I can, in this le lecture lesson, I can just speak about my experience. And of course, uh, there are many other uh, appointments uh, during this Zoom, and the other teacher, they will speak about their experience. And then, of course, uh, the goal of those ones that they watch us is to combine all these experience and try to creating is their own experience. I will say that uh, by my experience, uh, I can uh, uh, think that uh, I, I get my success because probably I was egoistic. Egoistic, in, not in the negative way, egoistic in the positive way, because I think that uh, uh, what is uh, very important for the dancer now is to have a goal. If you have a goal, for sure, uh, you are already in a good track. So, uh, and the goal, for sure, has to be something that you can support. Of course, I cannot start dancing at the age of uh, 30 years old, for example, and thinking to become a world champion into the profession. If I didn't start in my young age, it will be a little bit difficult. And therefore, uh, they, I should have uh, an, a goal that uh, is possible. It's not like uh, an, a dream that I cannot realize. It's very important to have a dream, but the dream has to be touchable, has to be uh, catchable, the dream. Uh, therefore, is, uh, I suggest to everyone to, have, uh, to point some goal and to have the strategy to how to achieve this goal. I give you my experience. For example, uh, I have my first goal is to uh, dance uh, 
my uh, step, my choreography, my basic step uh, as perfect as possible. Of course, uh, uh, the perfection is uh, something that is uh, coming by the knowledge because knowledge is the power. First of all, you should know what you have to do it. And then you have to, once you know, you have to train your body and you have to discipline your body in order to do it uh, uh, as, as clear as possible and uh, with a high quality level as possible, uh, the, the action that you have to do it, the step that you have to do it, the movement that you have to do it. So uh, this is, should be the first goal of every dancer. And of course, uh, once you're a dancer, is, you shouldn't have the goal to arrive directly to the competition and try to win the competition. This is start to be the second step. Of course, once you arrive to the competition, you have to bring to the competition what you are able to do it into the practice and into the lesson that sometimes is possible and then bring to the competition. And without thinking about the result, is the result is coming. But then once you arrive, once you're going forward, is the goal, it will change because every time that you catch the goal that you would like to catch, you have to plan and you have to strategy another goal. And this is very important to have this motivation, to keep it all your motivation on in order to develop yourself, in order to reach your uh, maximum from your body, your uh, maximum expression from your body. And uh, uh, for sure is to plan the goal is very, very important. Uh, I would like to say that uh, also, during my dancing career, as I said before, I think you have to be a little bit also uh, to looking for the future of ballroom dancing. I would like to see the couple into the dancing floor that they are more egoistic because I see that there are many couples in the dancing floor that they try to please just the judge, which is, of course, now I'm a judge. I will say to, I will suggest to, to this couple, judge is not important. It's very important yourself. And it's very important, a very important judge that there is into the dancing floor is the audience. If you, by watching, by looking to the future of ballroom dancing, I will suggest if you are uh, taking the appreciation of the audience, because the audience has the same quality knowledge of the judge inside, okay? Because I never see in my dancing career the audience stupid. The audience are very clever and the audience have a very good knowledge as well. Because in our industry, those people that are coming to watch the competition, the 80% of the audience is because it's inside of dancing. They know, they, they dance one time the natural turn, for example. They dance at least one time the feather step. So at least they know how to do it. And if you take the appreciation of the audience, for sure, little by little, you will change also the uh, opinion of the judge. And this is uh, what is uh, you creating. You're creating your good success. And of course, I believe that uh, it will, you're creating the perfect atmosphere in order to bring uh, the ballroom dancing into the uh, future lake and into the successful lake in order to have uh, once again the same quantity of the couple in a competition like they are in Latin America. So, and uh, of course, maybe the Latin American uh, teacher can give some advice how to develop. But every time that I try to open the conversation with some Ameri Latin America, they will say, oh, it's too much boring, the ballroom dancing. And of course, I would like to take it like uh, this uh, uh, critic, take it uh, inside of me, but try to change and try to prove that uh, we can do it and we can change. So uh, about the communication, and then I will introduce my guest. About the communication is uh, very important and the message that we do it. So every time we are in the dancing floor, we have to think that we are speaking with our body. So it's very important, our body language. And of course, as uh, I don't know, there was one professor is like, uh, if I remember the name, Albert Marebien, I think. He said that, uh, uh, the 55% of the communication that the people can remember, that the message arrive, is just no verbal communication. So no verbal communication is mean that is just body language. So if I go in, for example, to the theater and uh, I go into 
uh, watch a very good uh, singer. For sure, I will not remember all the words that they say into the uh, song, but for sure I will remember if they act with some uh, uh, strange thing. Maybe if you give the flower to the people into the audience, I will remember. Is this is no verbal communication, and uh, I know that is the 38 percent is like paraverbal, and the seven percent is a verbal communication. So just now, what I'm speaking now, once you uh, we finish the online uh, Zoom uh, lecture, you will remember to what I say just the seven percent. Then if you put that my English is not very clear, maybe you will remember just 2%. So is, now is, uh, I'm uh, in this situation, I feel like hopeless. <laughs> but anyway, is the time now to invite uh, the special guest. Uh, as you know, uh, I will do this uh, uh, online Zoom in uh, Roma now, because uh, this evening I will have the fly to go into Turkey, which I'm going to teach. And uh, unfortunately, I cannot do it this uh, online lesson as I'm supposed to do it with my wife, Edita, because she's also in Lithuania to judge the Lithuanian national championship. So in this situation, it is a positive because I can see that the, the war still go on. But I'm very uh, honored and I'm very glad to be here because uh, I ask to one very special person in my life to assist me into the Zoom lecture and she say yes. And uh, I would like to introduce my teacher, Simona Fancello. I just myself clap. Thank you, Simona. You can speak. I think from here they, they, they can hear you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> so is, uh, is, uh, I feel a little bit nervous because usually I am the student of Simona, okay? Is, I feel still, she's my teacher. I, every time that I call her, or I text with her, I call her Maestra. Just today I use her name, Simona Fancello, but usually I will call Maestra, which is master. Uh, and then uh, I'm uh, very glad, but I feel a little bit nervous because it's the first time that she's uh, uh, my assistant in a one online lesson. So we did, uh, we did in lesson, we did in lesson, sorry, also. And uh, it was also a very good challenge for me. So anyway, now let's see in a, a practical, what, uh, what I have the idea of to looking into the future of the ballroom dancing. For sure, what is interesting for me is uh, body language, okay? And of course, as I mentioned before, uh, I think that uh, it's very important that everybody try this information, but this information is just uh, for the intermediate and top level couple, because uh, I believe that if the intermediate and the top level couple, they will change uh, the way to interpret the ballroom dancing, for sure the young generation will follow because this is, uh, is how it should work. So uh, therefore I suggest strongly if some uh, top level couple are here to this Zoom lecture to practice, especially in this situation that there are no competition and to try to experience new idea. So uh, today I would like to concentrate more about rotation into the body, rotation and sway, okay, into the body. So of course, as everybody know, the rotation and sway that is arriving to the body is coming from the lower part. Also our sway is coming from using our feet connecting to the floor to using our knee. So the lower part of our body is very, very important because it's connecting to the floor and everything that we're creating should be creating by using the floor. And this is, I think that it's very clear message and everybody know about it, okay? Everybody know. It's not easy to do it, I understand, but everybody know uh, some principle about our rotation and our sway. So in a, in a time that uh, you should uh, look into the future of the ballroom dancing, I would like to see that the rotation and sway is become one unit movement because uh, often I can see the dancing floor. That's why it can be boring to watch uh, ballroom dancing because uh, uh, our rotation and our sway often during the dancing is uh, separately. So usually we have a step that we have rotation and step that we have a sway. So if, for example, analyze na natural turn in walls, in natural churn walls, we have uh, we have CBM, which is rotation, and then we have 
swing, of course, and then in order to balance the swing, I should create sway in order to balance the swing. And usually, is uh, these two action, we will dance uh, separately because I don't know why, because uh, they think that uh, we have to be very precise to show the mechanic of the movement, which is, I agree. But I would like to create a more artistic interpretation and I create a more different effect. I believe more beauty. I believe that is become more in harmony with the music. And I will start to creating rotation and sway in the same time. So, for example, if I going to have uh, my preparation step of natural turn, I have my rotation, then I have a little bit also wind up a little bit the sway. And once I wind up the sway, also the lady has a little bit shoulder pressure to the right side. So it's something like that. I have to imagine that my swing action for sure is a, and a movement that is going down to the floor and up to the floor. And once I'm going down and up during this kind of action, I also have a rotation and I have to balance with the sway. But I should think also about the action that is coming into my left side. So not just rotation without using my left side sway. In order to be complete, I prefer that during the natural turn, we should try to creating also a little bit left side sway in order to make it a little bit more the swing full. And then now we go into the right side sway and we develop also the rotation to the left in order to have another preparation for the next figure. So is in this situation, I can find the, my rotation and my sway much more in harmony. And this is, I just analyze a very simple basic figure. Now, uh, I will going to show you uh, eight bars of choreography in walls. And we start to analyze this subject. And I will give you some information, some idea to how to develop. And uh, I will dance these eight bars. First of all, I will explain the step. Then I will dance uh, in a classical way that is for me is uh, was beauty because teach us how to arrive to the present but it's not enough if we continue to do it to using that kind of uh, way of dancing it's not enough to develop and to go into the future and to make uh, uh, the artistic uh, interpretation even more high level so uh, the step i hope that everybody can see from here we start with a uh, very simple, with a, a natural weave in close position. Eh? We dance one, two, three. Then we're going to dance outside change. Four, five, six. And we finish in promenade. Now we'll take a little bit more space. From promenade, we dance very popular figure. Okay, it's a chassis lock. One, two, and three. And then right lunge. Four, five, six. Then from here we dance natural check one two three reverse pivot and then we're going to dance progressive chassis to the left four five and six sorry so to the right i say to the left progressive chassis to the right then outside change one two three and then i will take a little bit more space because there are no good light as miko suggest me and then from promenade i will dance cross chassis four and five, six, ready to dance and a natural turn action. So you see why my teacher is here because I was saying uh, progressive chassis to the left and she, she immediately correct me, no, no, to the right, to the right. So it's, I feel more safe once she's next to me. So uh, once again, I will repeat now this choreography with a full frame. One, two, three, four, five, Six, one, two, and three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, and six, one, two, three, four, and five, six. Okay, let's imagine that as you see here, we have a floor, and you can see that there is long side, there is short side, and of course, this part is fill up uh, the short side of the floor. So, and is uh, quite very classical step because uh, is all the step that I was dancing is really coming from the basic. There is not 
any strange uh, step that uh, once you will see, you cannot read. So this is what is very important for me. It's very important that uh, you can develop your artistic, uh, um, your artistic uh, interpretation of your dancing, but uh, you don't have to be not readable because this is very important, not just for the judge, but also for the audience that once they see uh, you dancing, you should show that they, they, you do something that they know, but you will know in a different way. So uh, I remember one teacher say to me a uh, very important word that I still like to repeat during my uh, group lesson, during my lecture, uh, that is not now in a way that we are now, it's not now uh, very important to uh, dance a difficult step, difficult choreography, and make it look easy. Of course, it's important to dance a difficult step and make it look easy. But I think the top level couple should try to dance an easy step. So easy step, which means like basic step, but try to make it look interesting. And this is, is not very easy to dance basic step and make it look interesting, the basic step. So therefore, today now we're going to analyze this part and then I will dance once again and I will try now to using our full energy. And of course, position is very important to have a good volume, a good frame, okay? Connection is very important to always respect our space. So ladies stay in a space, men stay in his space, okay? Without cross each other, okay? Then now we're going to dance our natural whip. One, using the leg, two, three, outside change, using the leg, four, five, six, to create a swing. Then now we're going to dance our chasse lock. I take a little bit more space from promenade. And one, two, and three, four, five, six. I have present the lady. Then now, natural check. Lady present herself and man present himself. Reverse pivot, then even to reverse pivot, it's very important to respect the principle of the reverse turn, for sure. I will not uh, make it a little bit deep because as I mentioned, I want that uh, this lesson is for the advanced level and for the intermediate level dance that they don't have the problem to understand how to deal with the natural or with the reverse turn. But just to let them understand how we can make it look interesting, even the uh, easy choreography, even basic choreography. So then from reverse pivot, I will go into the progressive chassis to the right. And even here is very important to using the leg during the drive action, swing up, close perfect the foot, ready to dance outside change, one promenade. And then after promenade, I take a little bit more space now. And into the corner, we're going to dance a cross chassis. One and two, three, and ready to dance maybe in a natural chair. Now, let's see how we can develop by using, of course, now the was rotation and sway. And the rotation and sway, of course, was like a result, just the result of how we use our leg. But I would like to try to make it more body expression and I try to, for sure, using my leg, but to try to also activate uh, my body in order to maximize the action that I receive from the leg. Not just uh, receiving away, but also activating my body to show maybe more rotation or maybe activating my body to show more sway to one side or sway to the other side and try to make it more for example, if I dance rotation sway together, try to make it much more three-dimensional and much more flexible. And for sure, I will adjust also some uh, uh, part of the choreography to make it more interesting, but to still maintain the basic principle. For example, if I, before I was dancing natural weave, now I will dance a natural turn where Simona have a heel turn, and I go in like in a position of some foot lunge, then from some foot lunge, Simona will dance a swivel, and then we go in directly to the outside change and promenade. So this is, could be like a classical version 
is a normal. One, two, three, four, five, six. More develop, more. If I look into the future, this natural wave can one and two and three and four, five, six. So it's going to be with more accent. And of course, it's very interesting to see how we change the position, for sure. If I go into activating my natural weave, as you see, we still dance in line, and then outside partner, and then into the promenade. If I go into dance, this kind of outside change with the sample to lunch, a swivel interpretation, I go into dance in line, lady do a heel turn, I will lead there like in sample to lunch position, then I will change in outside partner position, and then again in promenade. And of course, this is giving me the opportunity to develop much more the rotation. And also, I will want to introduce a little bit sway. For example, once I dance natural turn, I have to sway here to the right in order to let Simona close the feet. If I go in pass, Simona, she will not be able to close the feet. So I need to put my uh, center of rotation to my right shoulder. Once I put the center rotation to my right shoulder, Simona will be able to close the feet. Then from here, I will step to the side and I will switch by using my rotation of the hip into the sun foot range position with a little bit like sway to my left side. So in this situation, as Simona was not ready because I didn't explain it before, she, she, as you see, she turned the head. Then she stepped backward to do the switch to do the switch, correct. Then me, in this situation, I can go into the right in order to have promenade. So in this situation, I also not dance the classical version of outside change of promenade, but I will creating a little bit sway to the right in order to have uh, like more volume of the lady in order to see a better movement during the promenade. So I will try once again, one, two, three, four, and five, six. As you see, there is uh, much more activity into the upper part. And uh, I believe that this kind of activity is uh, much more beauty and much more artistic. Now we continue and we have a chassis lock. Let's see what happened in the chassis lock. Usually in the classical chassis lock, I will dance always to the left. I arrive to my left foot. I transfer the way from left to right and I'm going to dance right flange. So in this situation, I would like to try to change my sway because during the action of the promenade into the chassis lock, I have pendulum and I have metronomic action. Okay, so I have pendulum action, which is our pendulum is with my leg. And then I have metronomic action, which is I going to swing my body like uh, creating a bridge. So I have pendulum and metronomic. So now in the, mm, in the more uh, artistic interpretation of the chassis lock, or maybe into the like uh, develop of the future interpretation of chassis lock, I suggest to continue with the pendulum action, not just into the leg, but also into the body in order to creating more also sway. And of course, during this swing action, which is pendulum, and then also, creating to the body the same pendulum, we go into start to creating a reverse turn. So usually also there are reverse turn in the classical one, even there are reverse turn in the classical one. But I believe that if I stay always left, then I go into the, my metronomic action, it's not so easy to let the lady pass. And the lady here should be more pass in front ready to move after in the right lunge. So, and uh, with the interpretation of the body that I do it a full pendulum swing, I can feel that now Simona in this situation is already in front of me. And then once I cross, I will create in my metronomic action in order to transfer the weight to the left foot. So, and this for sure, chassis lock, simple figure, very popular figure. It starts to be much more beauty to dance like this. Of course, in order to dance like this, you should first learn the principle of the balance, the principle of the swing action, the principle of the connection. It's not that uh, this information is for everybody, for sure. 
This information is for those couples that they have a solid principle and solid position. So we're going again to show you chasse lock, and then we're going to the right flange. Chasse lock, and then going into the right flange. Once I go into the right flange, as you see, I start my rotation to the right to send the partner more backward in her left foot. Then from here, in a classical version, which is I don't turn to the right, but I just move aside and change. So there are not rotation in the classical version. Here, I would like to uh, develop a little bit more the rotation in the way in to have better presentation. Then changing the sway, and then also the rotation to prepare to wind up for the natural check. Often, I can see that the couple try to copy this information and uh, they don't know the principle. So if I go into a rotation here to the right, and then I have immediately rotation to the left and then changing sway, I can see that I will bring my, bala, my, my partner off balance. So therefore, what is very important after the rotation to the right, first of all, change the sway that I can feel that my partner is still in her uh, left foot. And then when she's in her left foot, she can have the ability to wind up and creating more rotation in a way out. As you see, is much more possibility and quantity of a body turn in this situation. And we're going to dance uh, uh, natural check, reverse pivot. Usually once I dance reverse pivot as a man, I feel that in order to maintain my position, I should a little bit like uh, put myself a little bit under stress because the reverse pivot natural is a figure that uh, going a little bit to the right side because our center of balance is to the right side. But then if I, my center of balance is to my right shoulder and then I have to stay left, I feel a little bit strange. So therefore, I would like uh, to uh, advise all the couple, all the men to try to creating a uh, reverse turn action, reverse drive action with a uh, shape as a contra check. So once we dance contra check, if from natural check, I will dance contra check, I will go into that side and I will feel perfect in harmony, perfect in balance. Once from natural check, I will stay to the left. I feel that the position of my partner and the position of me are working a little bit against. And there are like a, a little bit stress, a little bit like pull. For sure, we're creating good volume, but a little bit looks static. So therefore, in this situation, I suggest to change a little bit the center of uh, rotation to the right, and then to have like interpretation, which is I going more like in the counter check. Of course, without cross, because if I, I'm staying counter check, I still in my space and Simona, she is in her space. This is the volume still there. Just uh, what we introduce in relation of our turn, we introduce turn and sway in the same moment. And then we're going to dance our classical outside change. In a situation that I go outside change, I can see that during the outside change to go into the promenade, one of, uh, no mistake, but a little bit like a not full interpretation that I don't see that the couple has a breathe during number two, three that go into the problem. So every time that we dance pendulum here, then in a moment that I go into the problem, I have to dance more like a metronomic action. So I will call like a swing that is a creating like bridge shape. So this is pendulum and this is bridge shape. So, and during this, action, I should create in this kind of breathing inside of the couple. And this breathing inside of the couple will not happen if I maintain too much like classical. Two, three. It's a little bit academic, which is correct if I think about junior, juvenile, sorry, juvenile, junior. But once you start to be in youth, you have to, and you are good level, of course, intermediate or high level, you have to try to experience new things. So therefore I suggest once the lady is to the left, the man between two and three using a little bit sway, just a little bit sway to the right 
in order to be more complementary with the head weight of the lady once she turned from closed position to open position. Because otherwise, if I stay left and lady stay left, then she turn, but she sell service. She turned just because she know that she has to turn. And I would like that to make it a little bit more real that once she turn is a turn because I will inform to let her turn the head by using a little bit more my uh, sway to the right and a little bit rotation to the left and then change once again to prominent position, rotation to the right and come back in a straight position. Then cross chasse, which is our last figure. Let's, draw, let's see how we can develop the cross chasse. Usually the cross chasse is have accent. One and two, three. And cross chasse is a figure that uh, is very functionally that from prominent position, we can go into some figure that is open finish or outside partner or in close position, in line position. So, and uh, usually uh, this is was dancing in a very classical and academic way, more, one and two, three, four, five, six. I will say that it's quite well dynamic. It's quite well uh, exciting figure. But I would like to try to restyle a little bit the way how to dance uh, the cross chasse to make it a little bit more like high quality level in terms of uh, timing and in terms of uh, body expression. So, and even here still by uh, try to connect the rotation and sway on the same time. So once I arrive into the promenade, I still have here the same pendulum action, okay? From the pendulum action, I have rotation to the left. It's quite similar of chasse lock, if you see, okay? But then in the end, I would like that I arrive immediately up and I present like a lady, like in over -corté. So if I'm going to dance, for example, over -corté, I'm going to present the lady, there, okay? And uh, timing wise, if before I was dancing, one and two, we are creating speed between one and two, okay? Now I would like to, don't create the speed, but to dance more, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So in this situation, you have to feel like uh, to using your back and to using all your back muscle, to combine, I show you from behind, to combine rotation and sway, like swimming backward. If you try to swim in backward, you have to move your back in this situation. So in this point, I will try first to swim in back with my left, then to swim in back with my right, and then I go in ready to the natural turn. And timing wise, as I say, I creating this kind of uh, holding to create a much more surprise. So it's going to be one, two, three, and one, two, three. And like this, you see, you really feel like your body weight, your body weight uh, uh, have the momentum to create in the next swing course, which is in this situation is uh, belong to the some natural turn figure. I will show you in position with my teacher. One, two, three, and one, two, three. And this is what going to be our natural turn. So this is how we try to review and uh, uh, restyling a little bit the movement of this classical version figure. Is of course, some of you can take this figure as example and put in the choreography, but I don't want that to uh, take just the figure and copy what I'm doing. I just would like that you understand the idea, you understand the formula, the principle, and you will apply into your dance. You will try to make it your dancing more artistic and more innovation inside of uh, your dancing by using the movement, by using the connection between rotation and sway. So uh, maybe my Esther, you can help me, you can try to put a waltz and we can uh, perform the two things with the music, the classical one and the innovation one with the music, maybe you can see more the different and you can see the idea of uh, the subject of the lecture that, uh, which is my point of view, looking into the future of the ballroom dance.
I don't know if you hear the music. Mirko? Mirko? We can hear it. We can hear it. Okay, perfect. Mirko. We can hear it. You can hear music? Not very loud. Now, now it's gone. Metti la più alta, mi. Mi levo un attimo gli auricolari. Ok. Adesso sì. Ah, l'ho spenta. So, of course, uh, it's not easy to do it and dance in front of the camera, but so uh, I hope that you was able to see. I understand that I'm with my iPhone and uh, maybe the distance is not quite good. But for sure, it's a, a good opportunity to keep in touch and to give the, the people motivation. Now, let's go in to see another part of... Uh, uh, step, a choreography, and uh, maybe let's analyze a little bit Foxtrot now. And even here, I would like to do the same uh, job to let you understand that it is possible and it is very flexible to using everywhere this kind of uh, uh, subject. Of course, I would like that you're using, but you not abuse, because how you feel your abuse, you feel once you start to lose the principle. You start to lose time, you start to lose connection, you start to lose balance, you start to lose uh, correct footwork and correct uh, mechanic of movement of the leg. So in this situation, it means that uh, your artistic interpretation is not uh, uh, correct to start or to do it, or is not in balance to what you have to create and using from the lower part. So now we're going to analyze uh, quite uh, uh, easy step of a foxtrot. I will say easy, but it's not very easy because I spend all my career in order to learn. So we start with a feather step and the feather step is outside pattern. Okay, we start feather step outside pattern, but usually the feather step is finished also outside pattern. Okay, but this is, we can dance feather step finish in line. So one, two, three, four, and we finish in line. Then from inline movement, and of course, we change the direction. From diagonal center, we're going to move diagonal wall, and we're going to dance a curve free step. Five, six, seven, eight. Of course, curve free step is a basic figure, and like this, I will dance not so anything unusual. It's a curve free step. And then I will dance back curve feather, which is, first of all, I'm going to step backward, and I'm going to dance a curve feather. One, two, three, four. And then I will be going to dance a running finish outside pattern five, six, seven, eight. And now again, in the same position, like in the beginning. So actually by the exercise, I can continue with the same figure. If I show you, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is, could be also good exercise to pick like not so many step of your choreography, like two, three step of your choreography, two, three figure, and try to dance in a row and continue to make it full, like position correct, connection correct, footwork, leg action, 
and then flexibility in the body like I want to explain. And then of course, if you dance only one time without repeat, what happened? Maybe you'll be able to dance the first four bars of your choreography, but you should be able also to dance the last four bars of your choreography, especially if the music is two minutes. And in order to do this, it's not just important to improve your physical interpretation of the dancing, but is improve is the most important to improve your muscle memory. I strongly believe that the muscle memory are more important than the physical preparation because you should try to have a movement and the action that is quite natural. So I remember one of the some last competition of my dance career. Uh, I was competing inside of the floor with people almost that was like uh, uh, five, eight years younger than me. So which is in a physical situation, they're supposed to be more strong than me. But I remember that during my last dance, I was still uh, have uh, good energy, good uh, uh, stamina on it. And not because of my physical preparation, but maybe because of my muscle memory uh, of my experience. So therefore, this exercise could be good in order to develop your experience and your muscle memory. But now we're going to see what, how we can develop this four bars of choreography, that is very simple. And I immediately dance this part in position in a classical way, in a classical version. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 As you see, it's quite, nice foxtrot movement and as you see it's very clear once i do rotation once i do sway and uh, are not uh, so much uh, in harmony and so much uh, in connection or flexibility of the couple like uh, for example same exercise like you wash your hands you wash your hands you feel that the right hand and the left hands don't do the same movement but in the hands they are in harmony and I don't want to see that the couple doing the same movement, like you try to wash the hand together. You cannot wash the hand by keeping your hand together. You should move and you should separate your hands. And this is, should be also into the body. So once we're going to dance now this figure and I try to develop, I would like that immediately to have more sway and change the sway during my inline action. So usually before the feather step was keeping to the right and then cool free step going to the left. In this situation, I will going to dance my feather step with a for sure rotation, sway, and I change the sway in order to dance another. Sway by counter check and sway to the uh, cool free step. Then I'm going to dance cool feather, and in the cool feather, I will going to analyze rotation and then to the left and then rotation to the right to lead the partner in the cool feather. And then after maybe I can continue more the turn, which is my partner going into the forward position because I developed the rotation of the end of the curve feather. Now, if Simona can help me, you can put Foxtrot music and we can show the two version. And I believe that uh, we are nearly to the end of uh, lecture. So I hope that the 
my message arrived clear. Of course, as I tell you once again, it's not very easy to don't feel the energy of the student, of the couple that assist the uh, lecture. But I hope that uh, it was uh, uh, motivated. Uh, I give you good motivation. I inspire uh, many of you to go in now immediately to the dancing floor or maybe at home to move the table and immediately try to develop and to bring uh, the beautiful and elegant and classical ballroom dancing into the future in order that uh, we can be successful as a Latin. So once again, I would like to say thank you very much to my teacher, Simona, to assist me. She was great no. assistant. Uh, I make many mistakes because I was concentrated <laughs> today. But maybe you forgive me this time. And uh, thank you also to put the music. And uh, so, I don't know if uh, I can uh, thank no, the, you can't uh, stop for Echo. sure WDC. Eh? I would like sorry, to. Sorry, Fred. I, I would like to thank you very, very much, Mirko. I think we all agree that the future of ballroom looks bright in your hands. And I hope you will see it as a compliment, but I got a strong remembrance of, of Benny Tolmai, who was a great teacher as well. I would also like to thank you for your special surprise, Simona. It was very nice to see you, Simona, in good health. And altogether, it was good to see that Italy is dancing. Great to see you both. And thanks a lot for the wonderful lecture you gave. Mirko, that was fantastic. Thank, thank you very much, Fred. Thank you, Mirko. Thank you, Simona. That was amazing. That was exactly what was. Thank you to everybody. Before I was not listening anything. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you to everybody. Amazing. Thank you, WDC. Both ways, the way you guys, you know, take hold and move, fly like birds. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mirko. Thank you. Thank you, Mirko. Thank you, Fred, also for the compliment. Thank you, and ladies, no and, and ladies and gentlemen, remember next week, same time, same place for the next lecture. So, hope to see you guys. Thank you very much. Thank That's you very much. Bon bye bye. Next bye week, bye. next week with some other great lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ciao.